so yeah I, I I, I don't think it's an option anymore whether to get into video or not. It might have been sort of five years ago or, 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 you know, it isn't now. Whether you're making YouTube videos, those sort of things, fair enough, that's an option. But we can't escape getting on Zoom calls and um, being invited on. You know, this is a podcast. In theory, it, it's audio and I could show up without, but, you know, I, I could have been shocked when you say, oh, we're actually going to record this as well and it's going to YouTube. And now I'm now I'm in a panic because I'm thinking, oh, no, no one's going to think I'm credible because I look yeah, terrible on video. I do, and that um, happens to me all much, the time. They're like, you didn't tell me it's going to be recorded. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. So how much better to show up going, I know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be the one of the best people on this person's channel because while everybody else is hiding away from it, I'm really going to embrace it. And um, yeah, I want to I want to own this. And I want to want people to say about me, God, you look, they look really good on video. So welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Enough Already podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Jordan, and this is the place for consultants and coaches who want to forge their own path to success in their careers and in their lives. And if you've ever thought about using videos as a key way to attract and warm up and convert those clients that you're dying to work with and leverage all your consulting and coaching to help, you're going to love this particular episode. So I have on my show, my guest, Adrian Salisbury, who is an expert in videos, YouTube, and helping us create in a great environment like you're going to see in his background so that we come across wonderful, credible, and all of those things. But more importantly, to create those kinds of videos that really make a difference for our clients at each stage of their journey with us. So you're going to love that. And if you want a way to bring your personality forward in your business, definitely you want to tune into this episode. So without further ado, I would love to introduce my guest, Adrian. Welcome to the show. Hey, Betsy. Thank you for having me here. So grateful. We met several years ago, and I have always remembered your advice on how to even set up my room. You were so great, just like moving me around my office and helping me figure everything out. So when I wanted to do the episode, I immediately thought of you, and I, I actually tracked you down. <laughs> like, I got to have you on the show. Um, but before we get into all of your expertise around video production, I'd just love to get a little bit more of your background just in general, and um, a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Like, how did you get started in your own business? And out of all the things you wanted to focus on, why videos? Yeah, um, thank you. Well, my background is uh, I've been a professional photographer, or I had been a professional photographer for about 15 years. Um, really like this idea. I think it was Pat, well, it was Pat Flynn that I was listening to um, many years ago and his podcast talking about all these different ways of um, passive income that you could earn. And I thought, I love the idea of this. And actually, I messed around with a whole load of different ideas and things that I thought uh, it would work. They didn't. <laughs> and um, I actually thought, well, what I just teach photography, you know, I love, I, I always have people coming up to me and saying, Oh, can you just help me up with this camera? Or what camera should I buy? And uh, how do you get that blurry background and things? So I, I created a photography course, thought that was going to be my journey. And um, yeah, it didn't. It, 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 it flopped, if I'm honest. And uh, when I joined, I found, do you know if James Webmore, Business by Design? Oh, yes, I do. Um, yeah. So I, I saw an advert for James Webmore's Business by Design at this point where I just launched this photography course and it flopped. Um, got into that community, was talking away, doing, um, we were doing some group calls and things, certainly being in the UK, we'd set up a little group over here. And every time I showed up on camera, people were saying, how come you look so good on camera? I want to look like that. And after I'd had a few people saying this to me, I thought, okay, maybe there's something here. And so I, I never set out to teach video, but I think this is a, true for a lot of coaches, really, that it's something that we've discovered that we've worked through a journey on, or maybe it's something that comes quite naturally to us that you think there's a lot of people struggling with this, that it just filled a very natural progression. So that was about 2017 that um, this was all happening. And we uh, very quickly then created this new training was called then Pro Video Academy. Now we've rebranded it as Impact. 
and yeah with no audience and uh, other than the folk that were in this community no email lists or anything like that i kind of scrapped everything else and went all in on teaching people video so that's interesting <laughs> so you actually were a business owner so you were 15 years as yes. a business owner as a photographer so for yeah. you your big pivot is i want to go from working with people all the time to more passive revenue like that was your vision yeah and to be honest initially it was me thinking of i what would i have been probably mid 40s uh, early 40s at the time and i'm thinking this is a young man's game you know i, I who's going to want to hire me in when i'm 60 years old and what do i do about a pension and so initially my my, my my desire with this or my my goal with this really was this could be some extra money that could come in you know if i could create this online training and start something off take the pressure off this so i could just pick and choose my clients and then as i started to get into it i really thought no i i love this and i this is what i want to do i've always enjoyed teaching helping people and it, yeah it feels a very natural fit for me so when you had your first course though did it was it have did it have anything to do with photography because when i hear you talk about photography to videography like that feels like a natural progression was your first yeah. course a natural progression or was it a departure from what you normally would do um it was some very random projects that we were looking at it wasn't a course at all it was um i'm trying to even think what the site was called now but there was there were these sort of forums and things that you know if you wanted to make money you should things like long tail keywords that you you would create this three page website and you get people to advertise on it and you you really go after these search phrases i think i'd picked um no pull dog harnesses uh, <laughs> so completely you know you just had to write three pages of content and you, you uh advertise it and you're, you're going to get revenue back so all kinds of things like this i created a a blog that was talking about presents for dads i think that was called i was sort of thinking around christmas and things what do you buy your dad for christmas and um so i tried some very random topics um and then i i think when you're looking around and you you know nobody who's doing anything online and you haven't really got any direction you just kind of hear these things and and this you know there's experts all over the place telling you that this is the way to make money online um so I, I dabbled in quite a few of them before we settled on an online course. But I mean, I at the time was teaching photography. So I, I'm, I'm a professional photographer. I had started uh, a, a website. I was doing some YouTube videos, just teaching people tips on photography. I was actually doing workshops here that I would have five or six people come in on a Saturday. And so it, it was quite easy for me to go, right, well, what I teach them on a Saturday here I can turn that into a course but what was the challenge is that i'd never done video before and i'd never done dealt with audio the lighting is very different to photography so all of these things were you know i had to overcome and uh, yeah i've wasted a lot of money on uh, again you can go on youtube and you can look at all the different ways and everyone's saying this is the way to light it and buy this bit of equipment and i kind of bought a lot of them and really narrowed it down and so in my in my it, it, while I'm hearing people saying to me, I'd love to look like that. Um, I'm also thinking, yeah, and I remember all the things that I'd watched that that were bad advice. And if I can fast track people to cut out all of that time wasting and save all that money that they're going to waste on equipment that if they ever come to me, I shall say, you didn't need that and you didn't need that. <laughs> so, so this, yeah, trying to really fast track people through and, and help them get to uh, video quality like this as quickly and easily as possible was always the goal. You know, it's so interesting. There's three things I'm hearing in your story that I think is really powerful. Number one is that there's something about when we want to do something really neat, unique and more special to us is we go with like the should to ought to, like what everybody else is telling us and we lose sight of who we are and you're like, and you, yeah. you did that. I did that. You know, like, well, we all do that when we're kind of on that journey, but kind of trying that out. It seems like there's a second thing is like coming back to home, you know, like this is what I mm -hmm. know. Like they say with authors, like write what you know, and as yeah. a business owner, like teach what you know, like lead with what you know. 
And I really like that third thing because that was a game changer for me in my business. So when I was pivoting from consulting into the coaching business I have now, I tried a lot of different things. Like I tried to sell this consulting course. I tried to sell all kinds of other programs that were all around my consulting technical expertise. And it just really wasn't working. Like your photography wasn't working to the same Mm -hmm. level. And then what I did is the same thing you did is I started paying attention to the questions that I got asked. And people would ask me all the time about like, well, how do I figure out my strengths and how do I find the words? And once I started paying attention to that and it's like, yes, that's what I love to do. And it makes sense. But I think what you, you discovered that I discovered is you have to look at your expertise sideways. Like you can't look at it so literally, you know, if you just said I'm a photographer, that's a very literal Mm -hmm. interpretation. If I'm somebody who uses the visual means to communicate and convey the essence of who somebody is, well, that's a much different, that's a more broad expertise that has a yeah. lot of different applications. Lighting might be different, but lighting is still lighting. The principles of the artistic side, you know, is still there. So I love yeah. that. I think that that is just powerful of just listening and paying attention. I love that. Yeah. And I think as well, I saw a, a, a bigger value in it in terms of, you know, yes, I can teach someone to, take better photos of their kids or their dogs, you know, whatever it might be. But actually here were people who were trying to run a business and they were totally stuck because they couldn't get going on camera or they were looking at other people and it was intimidating them and stopping them getting started. So I sort of thought, yeah, the photography one, I'm sure if I'd have stuck at that uh, with help on marketing, we'd, we'd have, we'd have done well with it. But I don't think I'd have got the same reward personally from it, from people, you know, like we do get now of folk that just sort of say, every time I show up, people tell me how good I look and, you know, and actually winning over clients because they, they know they stood out on video. That to me feels way more rewarding and a lot more purposeful than, than helping them with the photography. Well, and great timing for you is I think you and I met 2019, (laughs) right before the pandemic and when everything was going to video and online and people are doing their own videos and shows like this, like there's no pressure. I have to be in a studio. I could do it this way. Yeah. So you you couldn't, you couldn't pick a more perfect time to really like lean into that one. It's a market, a market (laughs) need that nobody could have anticipated. So that's awesome. Um, so. I would love to talk a little bit more about the power of video. Um, one of the things that I know from my experience is I my business would not be my business without my videos. I'll never forget when I discovered the power of video. It was a million years ago. I landed a client I never met before. They were in Canada and it was a yeah. huge contract and they it was for this org design project. And what was really interesting about this is when I learned about org design, this is my back in my OD consulting days. I had this book that I learned, um, I learned all about like organization design and that formed a lot of my foundation. And so I had a lot of content and a lot of videos around it. I didn't realize when I landed this client that my competitor for this particular gig was the author of that very book. And what they told me is I won the business because of my video. And it was like, wow, you know, and video was like hard for me to start. You know, it was not something that came natural. And it was like, whoa. And so I always want my clients to really delve into content creation, specifically videos. And so I would love for you to speak to two things about just to set this whole thing up is why is video such a powerful medium, especially for a consultant, a coach who the whole business model is based on relationships and trust and all of that. Why is video so important? And then we're going to talk about and why are so many people skittish about getting onto video? Yeah. Yeah, and great questions. Um, I think what I would, we talk about video um, and what I'm hearing is video, pre-recorded videos, content and things that, that you are able to do that people saw and were able to consume. You know, that's one aspect of it. Um, I think the, the power really comes when I when I talk to people and whether I'm on a, 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 whether it's because of a video they've watched or I'm on a call like this, um the impact comes through and 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 folks say it's like you're there in front of me you know and i think we can create this with good quality video we can really create this um sense of actually sitting right in front of somebody and it's it's, it genuinely is the next best thing to sit and talking to somebody in person face to face you know we 
there are different things we look at and work on. It, it, the fact that we're both on a fairly tight crop like this it creates this almost across a table. We're sitting in a coffee shop having a chat. It, all of this comes into it without realizing it. But yeah, I think it, it's, it's just a way that we can connect very easily with our audience techniques you know when we're talking to a person on the other end of it rather than we're just talking to this audience um you know if we're if we're on if we were on stage and we were talking to a hundred people in a room thousand people in a room in the audience there you're feeling very yes yeah, it's, it's lovely to be here but he's way over there actually this really feels intimate it feels you know very vip that i'm getting one-to-one -one time with somebody and I think that comes through very powerfully in, in video as a communication tool like this. Um, so yes, there's two, I think I feel there's two aspects to it. There's the pre-recorded video, the content, you know, we're big believers of YouTube. Um, so I love that. And I love that we're, we're putting content like this out as well. Um, but actually it's more than that. It's not just right. I've got a batch of videos to do. Let's go to the studio and record those. Um, what a studio can't give you is the ability to just flick this camera on in front of us and uh, every time we go live we look exactly the same it's consistent it's high quality and it's it's part of our brand um, so that's yeah does that answer the first one <laughs> yeah it seems like there's an intimacy that's involved so it I so in so. comparison to like a blog or something like that or a social media post yeah. a video takes that level of intimacy and it's like eye to eye. Like I could look at you in the eye right now yeah. and creating that like limbic resonance with you. Like we're connected. So like, yep. that's an, that's a big part of it. Um, it also seems like, like the no, like trust factor must play or, or yeah. it must help with that part. Cause you could tell just like, if I watch your video and I'm engaged and I want to continue listening, then I'll probably want to work with you. If I want to flip your yep. video off because your style annoys the crap out of me. You know, that might yep. be good intel as well. Or it might even be a, a buzzing that you've got going or a really poor, you know, quality that you just go, I don't want to talk to this person. You know, they haven't even invested in, you know, they're coming across very amateur, really. I, there's a, there was a survey, um, a research that Princeton University did that said uh, it takes one tenth of a second for us to make up our minds about people. And it says, um, we decide very quickly whether a person possesses the traits we feel are important, such as likability, trustworthiness, and competence, even though we haven't exchanged a single word with them. So I love that. And I kind of latched onto that and thought, wow, you know, it isn't, we hear a lot of people say, the quality doesn't matter. It's just about the content. Um, but I hear statistics like that. And as soon as this camera turns on, or as soon as you log onto a video, as you say, the, the no like and trust, you're instantly making a judgment whether, okay, this person looks professional. They look like a, an authority that I could listen to. Um, and again, maybe booking speakers for events and things. If they can look across a playlist and go, wow, they're professional. Uh, I, I really think it carries that. Yeah. Yeah. I love your differentiation here. So like, cause I was asking you like power video in general, and you're talking about quality and it's the same thing I talk to my clients about with relative to the quality of their website, you know, because yeah. a lot of people I talk to all the time, they're like, Oh, well, you know, especially like when they get into my brand messaging and positioning program, like we get through their strategy and they're like, well, can I just DIY my website? I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. You could totally do that. If you're an amazing visual branding person, graphic designer, and you yeah. have an ability to write really compelling words because everything you do shapes the thinking of your future clients. So if you put a crappy website out, you're not going to look like yep. a premium brand. And similar, what you're saying is yes, like a website's better than nothing. Similarly, probably a video may be better than no video, but a high quality mm. video is going to make you a high quality premium brand versus like, I'm just a, yep. you know, I'm a mom and pop shop and I'm just doing my consulting business and coaching business you know, as a side yeah. hustle, which doesn't create that same and kind I, of image. That's right. I think that's an excellent example, actually, and an il illustration of that. And it, I would say sometimes that a poor video can do more harm than not having a video. And it would go exactly the same with a website, wouldn't it? I'm that's almost true. better. I'm almost better. You've, you've got nothing there than me looking going, 
wow, when was this made? <laughs> you know? You're right um, about that. It'd be better to do a high quality LinkedIn profile. So just invest yeah. slightly in the graphics and get a really good profile shot and get great content yeah. than it is to put an ugly brochure website out there. Yeah. I think you're right about that. And, and that same kind of idea, actually, that before you even read a word on the page, you're looking and, and I'm sure exactly the same thing happens with a website that you're going, oh, this looks nice. You actually want to read it. You're not instantly put off and think, you know, who's going to read that if we look at it and it really looks really clunky HTML DIY. Um, you know, we, we would just go, wouldn't we? And, and so, yeah, it's a really good um, comparison, I think, to, to how the quality of video. And you're right, you know, you're, you're, you asked me about the power of video, but it absolutely starts with the quality. If, if someone isn't prepared to um, invest in a camera or, you know, a good webcam at, at least and get set up like this, it's pointless talking about the content of a video or the kind of things you should do. Because as we've just been saying, uh, I really think people would just be instantly turned off and it doesn't really matter what you say after that point. Yeah, it's kind of like the dirty bathrooms in a five star restaurant like you. Yeah. It, it creates that sort of like, ah, you know, there's a it creates a, a gap or a cognitive dissonance. Like you say you're a premium yes. brand, but now you look like this. So it's like it's interesting. It's like this is why I really wanted to have someone like you on the show is like I'm really good about the words and the strategy, making sure the content's compelling you know, but I'm not a visual expert, you know, visual design. I have a team that helps me with the the website design for that I deliver mm -hmm. for my clients. And similar, having someone like you who could set up the office and make it look good. Hopefully you're going to give yeah. me some tips because my lighting has been driving <laughs> me crazy and I can't crack the code on it. And I only have so much space. <laughs> so I'll probably ask you to critique my space. But, um, but I love, I love, I love this distinction because it's like, there's a good a good, it seems like a good, but it's not a good. It's like, it seems like the good, better, and best is all of the video is better than nothing. You know, better would be, it's like, well, make sure you have good content. And the best would be is that you need to have like really good design lighting and all of that. But it seems like the whole idea is like, if you're just going to do it, go for it, you know, get the good quality yeah. content, make sure it's brand congruent and make sure your visual aspect is brand congruent as well. And if you're a premium, you want to get a premium pricing, you want to be seen as a premium brand, you got to invest in your premium camera setup and all of that. Absolutely. And it actually leads us on to what you were saying is the second question, why people don't like it. I would think nine times out of 10, the reason somebody says, I hate looking at myself on video is because they're using low quality equipment. Um, and actually, you know, I, we, we've definitely found with our customers, I've had people that have said to me, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to improve my camera equipment because I just can't stand getting on camera. And I've said, trust me, you know, let's see, let's put some of this equipment together, see how good you look. And customers genuinely come back saying, I actually love getting on camera now because every time I show up on Zoom, people go, wow, you look amazing. What have you done? And, and that, so I think the, the two work very much the confidence. And this is what I mentioned in a training that we can talk about later. Um, when you actually set up, as you say, the background, you're in the right place, you set up the equipment. So it's really capturing and you and flattering you. The confidence becomes quite easy, actually, um, because you genuinely want to show up because you're almost sitting going, can't wait for them to show up on the other end of this call because I know they're going to say, oh, wow, you look so good. Um, right. So yeah that, that's a huge part of it and and whenever i found people that say oh i don't like making videos if i look at the videos and i you know i i can empathize with them i, I can see why they're not enjoying it um they want to be that top uh, you know we all want to be competing um with those top players in our in our niche and actually when you do yours and it, it's like the, the websites again you know you look at this really professional slick one and you go i can't do that i'm almost not going to bother trying and i think the confidence comes through exactly the same on video so i i do struggle when i hear people saying um just get started with what you've got you know that it's all about the content it's not about the quality it's not about equipment um you know, I, I, I disagree because I think if you start like that, it, most people aren't happy with the results they get. And it, it's just going to be niggling you in the back of your mind thinking, oh, but I wish I could get this set up. I wish I could look better or look like so and so. 
Um, I'm not going to be able to compete with them at their level. And, and all that's going on in your head. So I think the confidence side would make a massive difference to people if um, if they actually invested in good equipment and set it all up. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's a difference too, like depending on the quality of the video based on the sale. Like, so I've seen some programs and some people who are just sit in their you know, living room somewhere, the lighting's not all that great. They take a video, you know, then they're looking for a $25 sale. You know, like, okay, well, that's, yep. That doesn't like, you know, like that doesn't bother me that yeah. much. That video is better than nothing. I might've followed their videos because the quality wasn't important. But if you're trying yeah. to make a decision on a large ticket item, like a consulting or coaching mm. engagement, you know, the quality matters because of the price point also that you're going after, I think is yeah. one part and your of messaging it. messaging is, you know, your messaging as well. If you're sitting saying, Hey, I can, you know, I help six, seven figure coaches and um, but actually you look like you're in a bedroom there and you know, uh, it, 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 it's the same. It's that disconnect, isn't it? That we talked about earlier. Uh, so I think it absolutely has to be there to match your brand. If that's what you're telling people you are and the people you work with and what you can do for them, um, let's show up looking like it. Yeah. I think the other thing about setting up a studio, I don't know if, if this is for me, like I really want to work on my visual side because I kind of like fell into it when I started my podcast. It's like, well, it doesn't, it makes sense. Why don't I just put them on my YouTube channel? Because in yeah. the past, I've always had all my YouTube videos professionally done. So I never worried about the lighting and all of that. But once I got like, when I started podcasting, having my camera set up, having everything there and I got it into muscle memory routine. Now I'm not worried about those things. So it seems mm. like if you start off, at the first place with, I got my lighting situated. I got this, like, as I'm doing it, as much as I'm thinking about the branding of my YouTube channel or my, my podcast show. And I'm thinking about that. I get this foundation situated. So whenever yeah. you get on a call with somebody, it's like, I, I don't have to worry about that. I could just be in the moment, you know, with the person I'm talking to. Yeah. And there's something about the consistency as well. When uh, all of my videos on YouTube look like this, uh, and then I get on a coaching call with a customer afterwards and they say, I feel like I'm in one of your videos. It's right. they, they, you know, it, it surprises them that there is this same standard and quality. I haven't paid for a, a studio to create those videos, but then the one-to-one -one time is, is back on me on my laptop webcam and it, 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 people respect that and thank you for it. You know, it feels like I've, I've gone to some trouble to, to show up here. Um, well, and yeah. it's like what they see is what they get, you know, so there is some benefit yeah. from that standpoint. I had a client come yeah. here for like a VIP day. So I've been working on these VIP days to work through their brand in a day and their products and service framing in a day. And the first thing that Excellent. my client who came to my house, he wanted, it's like, where's its studio? I want to see where the magic happens. I'm like, well, it's just my right. office, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I'm like, all right, if you call it magic, but I, I do think that there is that congruency, you know, that it's like, yeah. oh, so I see that. So now when he sees me on video, it's like, I remember that. And there's That's all that it. consistency. Yeah, for sure. So I'd love to talk no, about the different different kinds of videos. So um, one of the things that I didn't really pay attention to when I started my YouTube channel and I, when I was doing videos is I got I had a bunch of them, but I didn't realize they all kind of had different uses, you know, and they were at different parts of the journey. You know, that there's some of them that just were like awareness kind of videos, like this is me, you know, introduce brand awareness kind of videos. Then there were like a certain kind of videos. I have like concept kind of videos around like, here's the five steps to this or whatever. And then I've just been playing around. I didn't even think about conversion videos. Like I could put a video on my thank you page and say, oh, thanks for signing up for this. And I'll jump mm -hmm. on a call with me. Like, I didn't think about those. And so like now I'm becoming more mindful. Like there's different videos for different reasons, but you know, I'm just yeah. kind of like guessing what they are. All those videos are. Could you tell me like the different kinds of videos that somebody can use and how does it serve different parts of their client pipeline? Yeah, I, th I think to be honest, I come at it very in, in a very natural way that I think, when would I actually like to reach out to somebody? And what would I like to say to them? You mentioned a thank you page, you know, how nice is that if I, I kind of come at it like, oh, someone's just bought. I'd really like to reach out to them and thank you for that. Thank them for that. You know, so let's record a thank you video and let's let's put it up in that place so they get this nice personal thank you from me. And it reassures them that, um, you know, they're in the right place. They're getting this kind of service. Uh, we, yeah, for us, our top of funnel, if you like, are very much YouTube videos. We, most of our customers, 70 to 80% of them would tell us that 
they first discovered us on YouTube. Uh, and that's why I'm so <laughs> passionate about it. That's why we created a YouTube Academy, because it just really made a lot of sense that although people, it might have been years later that they actually bought from us, but uh, time and again, they'll say to me, I think I first found you. It was that video you did on, and, it, and it's something over on YouTube where I, I got on their radar. And so we're very passionate about creating videos on YouTube that really are serving first. They're getting in front of our audience. And what is it that you're, you know, what is it that drives somebody to YouTube? Because anywhere else we put videos, we're, we're, we're interrupting and we run Facebook ads. I realize we're, you know, trying to target people We're we're getting in front of them. But actually, how much nicer when they go, ah, oh, bought this light or this microphone, I don't know how to set it up. I go to YouTube and there's me who says, hey, let me walk you through this. Let's, how, let's show you how to do this. Or should I buy this one or that one? And maybe we've saved them spending a lot of money on the wrong thing. And then they go, thank you. That was really, and I get some lovely comments back uh, on those YouTube videos. And it just starts a connection, that no like and trust that we've spoken about a few times. So for me, it starts very much with those how-to videos, those review videos that we do over on YouTube. Um, Hold on. For sure. I want to dive into that one because so the top yeah. of the funnel. So this is interesting because a lot of people might think the top of the funnel is, you know, um, I'm Adrian and I'm a video person and you think it's like it's talking about that. But that's not what you're saying. The top of the funnel is it's more no. answering the questions that somebody would be searching for. Why would they go to YouTube would be the how to's. And yeah. so if you're going to create, maybe it does this, and this would be for content in general. Like if you're going to do the top of your funnel, just answer those pain point questions, serve them at yeah. that point. That's the top of the funnel. Yeah. I don't actually have uh, an about me video. <laughs> um, Cause why does anybody care? Uh, you know, yes, I've got an about me page if, if anybody wants to go and look at it, but it really doesn't matter. And I think, you know that that's only serving me really trying to to do a video like that somebody comes to me they don't really care about me uh, and i'm okay with that <laughs> they want a solution and they see that i'm somebody that can help them get it um so even on my youtube videos we don't even do an intro you know a lot of people have a like a bumper or a sting video at the start that says hey i'm you know i'm adrian salisbury i've helped thousands of people do this and we don't even do that because why does anybody care they came to the video because they want an answer to how do i do this so i i don't even do it i just get straight into right let's help you solve this problem you know or so you've come here today because you want to know how on to the top of the on the top yeah. of the funnel of videos, but I can see on your, yeah. like if, if I were picturing, maybe it's just, you know, you could, you know, I still think like websites and stuff like that. I think yeah, like yeah. you could, you could tell your, you can write your story on your about page, or you could do a video that just describes yes. like this past journey that you talked about that um, yep. understanding that you started for 15 years, as a professional photographer, you wanted to go in a different direction. And then you fell into this because people started asking you, and then you did a deep dive in that. And now mm. that's what your business is all about. You could write that, but you just telling that story, like, cause I've met you before. Yeah. Like I didn't, and you know, until we were on the podcast, I didn't get that story out of you. I'm like, that's a great story. That would be a great video you could yeah. put on your website. Yeah. But, uh, but would it convert sales? Is it, is it nice to know about somebody as you're building a, you know, when, we, when we're talking about um, uh, really funnels and bringing customers in, uh, I think it's lovely to have that. And yes, uh, uh, you know, it, it's great to have these conversations and to talk about the journey. But I think if we're talking to people about what videos should they make, uh, yeah, to me, it's let, let's get things started with that top of funnel. We do on our landing pages. So on our Ecamm Academy, our YouTube Academy, right at the top is a video that yes, for sure, you know, read down the page and see what we're all about. But actually, if you want to just watch the video, and I realized that years ago, that the power of video really, <laughs> we were looking at some new accounting software for the business. And, and my wife said to me, who handles that side of the business, Right, I think we should change to this. Go, go and have a look at this page. And I kind of scrolled down all this and went, oh, video, click. <laughs> I just wanted to watch it. It's, it's way easier for us, isn't it, to consume. Um, we might watch the video and then go back and do the text. So absolutely, 
you're right you know on on pages and things landing pages um to put these videos on but always i'm still not talking about me in those videos the language is very much about you and what you're going to get out of this training um yeah so that's that's all i'm sort of i, I think people can create these big um sort of my story videos and uh, get some incredible footage on it and things like this um but actually uh, yeah what i've realized is that people don't really care <laughs> yes they need to connect with me but what's in it for them you know and if, if i'm the yeah. person that has simplified it and made it easy for them then they'll buy from me without knowing my journey it still seems like it's the story brand philosophy, you know, that would play out on a website that would say play out in a video. Yeah. The star of the video is always the customer, the client, you know, and yes. whatever it is. And it's like, whatever they need to know about you, then you share that. Like, it's important, I think, for my clients yes. to know, like, I'm not just a brand messaging person for consultants and coaches. I have 30 years as a consultant. I worked yes. with their, their audience. That's my differentiation. You know, but, yeah. it's, but it has to be in the context of like, this is, you know, like, I understand what you want. Now let me introduce myself, but it's not like Betsy Jordan is a world yeah. renowned consultant working with fortune. You know, like I, I would never mm. even say that that's a reasonable about page. You know, you wouldn't uh, never uh, in the third person, never about you. It's about I how know, you're the one to help them. <laughs> um, and I think that with, for me, I, I, I try to get that across in terms of um, references or testimonials. And do you need to know about, you know, yes, I'm in that story. You know, I'm the hero that's coming up alongside you, the guy to be able to walk no, you through this. No, I'm the mentor, this. not the hero. Oh, the client's the hero, Sorry, the yep. mentor. Yeah. That's right. No, you're right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but actually to, um, if I can say, rather than me telling you about all what I've done, I want to demonstrate it to you. So I'm, for me, when it's visual like this, I'm all about, right, let's show you some before and afters. Look at this person. You know, she was an accountant. She's a fitness instructor or whatever it might be. But actually, that's way more powerful than me trying to explain and say, um, hey, I've helped thousands of people. If I can go and hear some of them and listen to what they said about it. Uh, so I, I, I love to try and get testimonials in as much as possible. And um for me in video form, even more so. That's great too. Cause that would be like test. I have a lot of testimonial videos on my website and I think that that's so much more compelling. So it's like, it's using the yes. storytelling. So the, like on YouTube, it seems like a lot of what you're trying to do is just create value, value, value. Like whatever it is that the person's looking mm. for, jump right in top of the funnel here. When it requires a personal touch, then be personal on a thank you page. Say thank you from a personal yeah. standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you have a long form sales page, make it easy for people is, hey, if you're not a, if you're not a reader and you're more of an auditory yeah. person, <laughs> I got a quick video for you and that'll summarize That's everything, right. you know, one and done. And then if yeah. you're really trying to talk about yourself, always do it in the connection of like, but it's really about the client. And let the yeah. clients talk about you. Use testimonial videos, the before and afters, the storytelling, so that the future people could see themselves in those videos. Yeah, and I quite often check a, a script if I've written a script for a sales page or something. And I, am I saying I too much in here? You know, I'm going to help you do this. I'll do to actually then spin that around. You're going to learn. Uh, you know, so it's yeah. very much written um, with them in mind. And as you say, I, I, I'm here as the guide to show you through it but um it's all about you for sure but there is some there is something to be said though about your 15 years as a photographer and the artistic eye that you bring to the table um so yeah. i just i wouldn't minimize that one because that is something <laughs> that that is interesting that you know like having that artistic eye does mean something um yeah. let me let me ask you some other questions just in terms of like how people can get started with videos so there's two different mm -hmm. directions obviously they can go you know or at least two obvious ones they can hire out and get to the studio and spend money in that standpoint or they can set up their own studio and diy it you know with maybe some mm -hmm. outsourced editing help um how do you decide which one's right for you yeah i um like i mentioned or, or, or started hinting at earlier, really, if you're, if you were to go to a studio and book a set of videos, 
uh, you know, you want to create a course or you've got some idea. These are for set pages that you already know about. Uh, yes, you can do that and you can get it done very professionally. There's some negatives in that, really. Um, you've got to book somebody and find them who presumably is local. The cost of that, the consistency. What about when you suddenly decide you you change your something on the sales page and now you've got to go book again another slot to re-record it with them? you're just totally in their hands and this i've had several customers say this to me and this is why they came to me really was i just felt frustrated and like i was really in the hands of somebody else when i wanted to do this i've had folk that have said that have come away from a shoot like that and gone i really felt talked into a style and uh, i didn't really like it i didn't really feel it was me i felt intimidated in front of two or three people trying to do this talking um how much better to be able to just sit at home in a room on your own and uh, I, I, talking into a camera regardless, you know, either way you've got to talk into a camera and that's another issue. But um, to just be able to sit here and go, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to come back to this in an hour. Uh, it's so much better than that pressure of being on the clock where you're with somebody. Um, and I had another customer that came to me once and he said, um, again, this kind of frustration of, he said, I said, I remember waking up in the morning and I'd got this great idea. I'd kind of woken up thinking about this idea that I was going to talk about and um, spoke to his videographer. He was paying a lot of money out for some very professional videos and the guy couldn't fit him in until the following Thursday. And he sort of went, I just need to be able to record something and put it out. But because everything was at such a high quality, he, he couldn't, he felt he couldn't just pick up his camera and do something himself. So that's a few realities of, hiring somebody and, and relying on a studio or somebody even that comes to you um uh, so for sure you know trying to set this up on your own and uh, again as i mentioned earlier really that that fits those recorded videos it doesn't help you when you're coming on a call like this or doing a support call or a webinar you're not going to get a professional to come in and sit and help you with that one so you're back on your own and stuck really so you've now got this disconnect again that yes you've got these slick videos that are up there on your website but actually when when they speak to you is a different story uh so you're not getting that consistency unless you know everything i do is shot from this this same position with the same equipment um there's just this real uh, yeah people see me as a professional as i'm sure they do with you you know that it's we're consistent it's it's never that bad angle up from a laptop or anything i, I wouldn't let that happen I, I would only ever get on camera when i'm here and all i do is flick a camera on and i'm off so you know we've made it very simple it doesn't have to be really overwhelming with the tech so it seems like the difference is is like if you're going to do one and done kind of videos and you just want it to be for a particular thing versus like you want to make doing video creation a way of life if you're going to make yeah. video creation, webinars, any of those things a way of life, it just makes sense to invest in setting up the studio properly. Um, at the beginning, I can tell you like one of the benefits I got of when I was brand new in my video creation journey was having like, the guy who did my videos. He wasn't just like behind the camera making sure everything was technical. He was like a director, you know, and he taught me okay. skills. Like he taught me. Yeah. Like he told me all the time, like act it out. Like when I help my clients, like with doing videos, like I've had a videographer in the past and I had a client there, you know, they would say the words in a particular way. I'm like, no, you need to go back. You got to act them out. You know, you've got to, you know, if you're yeah. going to say there's three points, use your fingers and say there's three points, point one, you know, like to, to right. put some energy, if you're going to do that, yeah. it seems like in the beginning, you might need some skills, but if you're going to make video videos, a way of life. And I love this whole idea. It's like, if my, if my office is set up properly where I could just mm. flick the camera on and I got an idea, I can go with it. And I could tell you if people, like a lot of my clients who get stuck with content creation is that they have a hard time going from what's in their head into writing, but if they speak yeah. it, it's easier. So this is yes. like a hack for, you know, those types yeah. of like, let me just talk out loud kind of person that if I can get my studio situated, I can get content faster. And then plus yeah. I could put it on my blog and I could put it on my YouTube channel. And now I've got two search engines working for me rather than one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a way of life, isn't it? You know, we're none of us can avoid this now. <laughs> um, someone's going to ask you to get on a zoom call with them or 
teams or whatever it might be, you know, it's, it, it absolutely is. I don't think it's an option anymore to say whether you get into video or not. It, it's here for all of us. It's just whether we make that connection, some might be going, oh, I hadn't really considered that. I just thought I'd just click and open up a Zoom meeting and I blur out the background and do all that stuff. Um, and then you have a floating head, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, head. yeah. I hate the floating head. Um, so just we just made a video actually talking about that and uh, i find it so distracting when i can kind of almost see behind somebody what, what's going on and i'm more curious about that than what they're saying um so yeah I, I i i don't think it's an option anymore whether to get into video or not it might have been sort of five years ago or, or, or you know it isn't now whether you're making youtube videos those sort of things fair enough that's an option but we can't escape getting on Zoom calls and um, being invited on. You know, this is a podcast. In theory, it, it's audio and I could show up without. But, you know, I, I could have been shocked when you say, oh, we're actually going to record this as well. And it's going to YouTube. And now I'm now I'm in a panic because I'm thinking, oh, no, no one's going to think I'm credible because I look yeah, terrible on video. I do. And that um, happens to me all much, the time. They're like, you didn't tell me it's going to be recorded. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. So how much better to show up going? I know I'm, you know, I'm going to be the one of the best people on this person's channel because while everybody else is hiding away from it, I'm really going to embrace it. And um, yeah, I want to, I want to own this, and I want to want people to say about me, God, you look, they look really good on video, you know. Um, so let's talk about background because, like, okay, and we're going to use me as a guinea pig because there's no one else here to be a guinea pig, <laughs> so I might as well be the one. So I know you're going to have feedback for me. So looking at my space and how I'm setting it up. So I have a small office, so I don't have like a lot of room to work with to, you know, create yep. that depth and where my lighting is like, there's only so much I could do. So what would you say in terms of my background is working and what tweaks would you make to making sure that this is as show ready as what your space looks like? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, there's everything you've got behind you is working really well. Um, your what camera or what what are you using here to record on i have zoom no sorry the the hardware what is it a webcam or oh i camera? don't have a webcam do i need a webcam what are you using then built into have, your i just have zoom i'm just using zoom on my computer on my mac right so it's the little camera in the top of the mac is it that you're using yes yes yeah, yeah. um so you and i know you mentioned about lighting and things one of the issues you'll find is that with uh, a built-in camera or a webcam, typically it's fully auto. And so you don't get an option to adjust it or uh, I would like to bring your lighting down a little bit, but your camera is deciding what it thinks is the ideal um, brightness for this. So you don't actually get any options to change this. If you put a camera in, like I'm running on, you can actually dial this in and set everything up. And so it looks very natural. And it's the consistency, uh, again, as, as if you're actually there in front of me. Yours is very good. Um, but when you're saying about trying to adjust lighting and things, um, yeah, you're, you're not able to do that. And if I said it'd be good to just warm that up a little bit, again, you're not able to do that um, so you without need a being on a camera you need an actual camera not your okay so there's so all, yeah. from what i understand then there's three pieces of equipment you need you need your microphone you need your lighting and you need a camera yeah so this is the kind of uh camera that i'm using here this is a sony zve 10 um with a lens on the front and so i've got this in front of me looking back at me hooked into my computer with a hdmi cable so that's the the same as you'd have to a tv um through a games console or a yeah <laughs> satellite tv um so I, I hook up that way it feeds into my computer but it my computer sees it like a webcam um then yes audio for sure we can um improve on our audio and so many different options on what you do with audio again if you're up close like this and you want more of a podcaster mic like we're both working on we plug that in as well into our computer so the that's sorted as well so we can so just to clarify to, then no, no matter what i do because i kept buying new lights 
to see if I can yeah. fix it. And my lighting will never fix it. It's only, I need the camera. That's going to be able to give me the control over if it's softer or not. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it frustrates me when I hear people saying, again, with green screens and that, and everyone says, it's all about the lighting. And I say, no, it isn't. Uh, because you could throw a, a ton of light at this and all that's going to happen is your the, the the automatic camera here is going to go oh that's a lot of light let's dim it down or if you didn't have any lights on at all your camera would go oh it's dark in here let's brighten it up and you're not getting any control over that um that so, so, actually, so lighting is secondary and actually i say to people when they're talking to me about setting up i'll say let's get a camera in first because a lot of the time if if you're in good natural lighting anyway the camera will pick that up and use it. Um, really, I mean, my the light I've got in front of me is so low that it, it really is just causing sort of fill light in here um, because I can have other lighting on. And then you have like backlighting behind the blue somehow in there. So like, would yeah. backlighting help me? Like if I did back, you know, like some sort of- So I, little... I have a, a light overhead that because I'm on a, you know, I'm in a black t-shirt with a dark background it's up for debate at the minute whether the dark back, back, dark background changes and lightens up a little bit but in order to separate me i've got a light that's sitting up ahead um that really just kind of creates a bit of a um a line around me the blue light yeah that's uh we use phillips hue lights and that's just one of these strips that's on along the back of the desk and i can change that color around to whatever i want that's a an accent light that's not doing anything in terms of helping me it's just a bit of interest back there um and then i do have another light over on the side that again is pointing at that background and just putting a bit of light in um so i'm not totally lost on a black background but um subtle because i do like the dark and i think it works and someone said the other day you know with my gray hair it actually works really well the the, the two I, you know I think stands it out perfect. from it so is this the <laughs> kind you. of information you cover? I know you have the lights camera impact webinar is all the yeah. things that you're going over with me right now. Is this the kind of stuff that people can get in that webinar? And could you tell me what else goes in that webinar? Yeah, absolutely. So we really, um, it's my opportunity to help people or to convince people the value of showing up looking professional. There's a lot of before and after videos on that. And we're saying, you know, I put an example up of one of my customers before and after and we we've, we've um oh and my son's put him into a like a youtube um a facebook ad and we've put them side by side and gone which one of these would you buy from um you know and and things like that and, and all the way through it it's full of testimonials people saying look at the difference and i'm really taking through you know I, I, we talked about it briefly that these sort of three steps that we go through um mastering your set and we're talking about your background you know what does that say i do this we do this green screen uh, thing on the webinar where i pull up a screen behind me and we put some photos in of messy backgrounds and say you know what do you think to that um i also bring on some customers and show you the spaces that they're working in because for a lot of people they'll say i don't have the room how can i do that and it's been really good for me to say look look at this video do you like that well, now look at where they're filming it. And people have really enjoyed that and said that's really encouraged them. Then we talk about the tech. I show you the space that I'm in, the equipment that I'm using. And then we do talk about um, yourself and, and really, yeah, I, I've got a process that I go through there really of really trying to break down for people that are struggling with confidence on camera, how you can really get as good on camera as you are in person, because typically people are very good when they're in person face to face, you know, they can they can sell anything and they feel really confident, but then they look at a camera and just freeze up. So we break that down as well. So those three elements are very much what we talk about uh, on that call. So in, and what's the link to the webinar? How could people sign up for the webinar? Yeah. Um, have you got a link for it? Did you want to pop? Oh, no, link? no. Oh yeah, I'll pop a link in the in the show notes. Yeah, on, if you on... want to pop a link in there, um, that would be really good. And yes, it's available. Anybody can go in and just uh, log straight in. It will give you a few options of times you can jump in on. Um, but yeah, okay. I, I'm. Uh, it's a great training. I really enjoy it, and uh, I'm. I'm. I feel like we've put everything. In. A lot of people tell me we give too much away, uh, <laughs> um, but I think that's very much our style. And you know, the same on YouTube. 
people say, you know, no one's going to buy your programs if you give this much away. And I, to me, it's all about no like and trust. And if if I can really over deliver with people and the same on this webinar, then actually our experiences, they've come back to us and, and said, actually, you know, we want to come through this now, if that's what your free training's like. So, so most of your programs are, did you one-on-one -on -one or is it all courses is the main way that you one work with people? One-to-one is kind of a, a VIP version of what we do. Oh, I so I still take people through the same online training. Um, and it isn't, you know, we're not, I try to say we're not selling a course. It, it's a program because it, it isn't like we, over the years of running uh, Impact, I've stripped a lot of videos out. I've realized from customers, they say, I don't want to watch all that. I just want that result as quick as possible. And so we've gone, right, what's the absolute minimum? And so I will say on that webinar, if um, if you wanted to come into Impact, our program, and you buy the equipment that we recommend you get, and we're talking about $2,000 for camera, lights, microphone, you know, all the cables and everything that goes with it. Um, so it's an investment. But actually, if you look at it and go, right, well, that's going to free me up and I've got a 997 program and now all of a sudden I can get that done. I feel confident. It actually becomes very affordable. Um, and then our training on top of that to, to get you going with it. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it, it's a great program. <laughs> So I, I, I can imagine because of what I've already gotten all this information from you. So I, if I, you've given yep. me all this great information and all my listeners, and then we're going to get on the webinar, we're going to get tons of stuff. I know whatever your paid program is, is going to be amazing. Um, so yeah. tell us how we can get a hold of you. Like, I know you have a YouTube channel, obviously you have a website cause you give us the addresses and anything else that you would, and just please share anything else that you would want to share any lasting advice to consultants and coaches who are thinking about doing videos. Yeah, I, I would absolutely, you know, encourage you to, to embrace this. I don't, I don't I honestly don't see it as an option. It's not anything that's going away. This is, this is your brand. You know, it's, it's how you decide you're going to dress when you show up to an event. It's what your website looks like. It's what your, emails and the copy and everything it, it's it's all about you being professional in everything you do um and i don't think it's okay anymore to just show up with a really bad view um when we're trying to sell ourselves as professionals so i think you, you've, you've got to embrace it uh i would if you watch through that training of mine you will see how easily we're making this and you'll see some of those transformations i really just want to come alongside people and help them and get them over this hurdle as quick as possible so that they can get off and just be, uh, you know, carrying on with their business, but now in a much more professional presence. Um, so Adrian Salisbury, if you look at me on any of the social media, Adrian Salisbury or Adrian Salisbury HQ on uh, Instagram and um, LinkedIn, but um, sorry, a Salisbury, you'll get there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if maybe in the show notes, I, I can send you the, the link to everything, but uh, oh, head over to sure. YouTube. Yeah. Search, search yeah. for Adrian Salisbury on YouTube and you'll you'll find a load of content over there. Um, so the two first steps is like head on over to YouTube, get some ideas from your videos there and sign up for that webinar. And if you do those yeah. two things, you're going to get into your world pretty quickly. Is my yep, guess. Is absolutely. What I'm hearing. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, for sure. So this is such great encouragement. And it, I love what you offered in this conversation is like one inspiration on just kind of keeping at it until you get to the business that really supports like who you are, mm. what you're passionate about. And you're clearly passionate about this. I love the inspiration around why videos are so powerful and the difference it can make for your business. But also you gave us really great tactical information of what we could do to get started to make creating videos a way of life. I just, I love mm. everything that you shared. The only thing that I would add to what we're talking about here is I feel like as a consultant or coach, there's a lot of, a lot of people out there who do what you do, but not a lot of them are on video and not a lot of them yeah. are doing really good video. And if you want a very quick way, you know, using my story, you know, to stand out, even with people who wrote the book that influenced it, how you think about things, you could still win business because of the power of video and your content and developing that relationship with your audience. And we mm. know as consultants and coaches, trust is everything and videos is a great way. So I highly encourage everyone listening, definitely jump on that webinar. 
with with Adrian. This is really powerful. Get started and making videos a way of life. And thank you all for being here. And until next time, thanks for listening.